Okay, welcome back to my series on how to make the switch to Linux. Uh, we're on the third video here, so videos one and two talked about identifying what your use case is going to be, identifying uh, the impetus for wanting to install Linux to begin with, and taking the step into the free and open source uh, software world by test driving some programs on your current Windows or Apple computer. Uh, this video, I want to talk about four important things that I think are often conflated and often confused by the new Linux user. Those four things being number one, uh, what is the Linux kernel? Number two, what is a Linux distribution? Number three, what is a package manager? And number four, what is a desktop environment? So starting with number one, the Linux kernel. Most new users, and I fell victim to this as well, when they get into Linux, they don't really understand what the Linux kernel is or what the Linux kernel does. They think of Linux almost the same way they think of Microsoft or Apple, as sort of like an umbrella company or a brand. Like you have um, Apple that's responsible for Mac OS, you have Microsoft that's responsible for Windows, and you have Linux that's responsible for Linux. Um, but that's not really accurate. That's not really what the Linux kernel is. Linux isn't really a brand and it's not really a company. It's an open source project that has, you know, a couple of really prominent maintainers, but for the most part is developed and maintained by the community. And so we have to understand actually what a kernel is and what a kernel does on any computer. And so currently there are really three big kernels out there. There's the kernel that Apple uses or Macintosh uses on its Apple machines and that's called Unix. There's the kernel that Microsoft uses on Windows machines and that's called NT, which I forget what it stands for. And then there's the Linux that, or there's the kernel that Linux uses, which is obviously the Linux kernel. And so if we take a step back and imagine kind of like a stack of operations, at the bottom of that stack is going to be the physical components of your computer. Things like your motherboard, your CPU, your GPU, your RAM, your hard disk, all the physical manufactured components of your computer. Above that in the stack sits your kernel. And what the kernel does is it acts as sort of a middle manager or a micromanager that turns the actions of your hardware, the input output actions of your hardware into processes that our programs or our front end user can understand. So really it's in charge of, you know, when things are going to be executed, how those things are going to be executed, the order in which those things are going to be executed, uh, and translating all the IO stuff into more usable practical language that we can understand. Uh, there might be a lot of gray area there that I'm missing which I'm sure there is. Again, I'm not an IT professional, so if any of you guys want to sound off and, and correct something, that's how I understand how kernels work. Now, I'm sure there's a lot more depth than what I just said, but that should get us a working knowledge of what a kernel is. And the reason why I bring up kernels is because at the base of our stack is our hardware and our kernel. Anything that sits above that are getting to be more superficial differences in the operating system. And so I mentioned in a previous video that many people think, you know, the difference between Windows and Mac and Linux are, the, the differences are superficial, but the operating systems are fundamentally the same. And I said it's actually the reverse. The differences between Windows and Linux and um, Macintosh or Apple are fundamentally different. At the bottom of the stack, right above the hardware, is the kernel. And all three of these have different kernels. And I bring this up because when we start talking about distributions, I think new users believe that distributions are more different than they actually are. And so what a distribution is, is a collection of pre-installed packages, uh, customized desktop environment, and sometimes a different package manager. And so there's not a fundamental difference between the Linux distributions. They're all running on top of their hardware the same kernel. They're all speaking the same language. 
and experienced Linux users can actually make all of these different distributions look exactly the same if they're given enough time because all of these processes, all of these programs can all fit within the same Linux kernel. They all, they're all speaking the same language. Um, so all of that to say that choosing your first distribution, although it is an important thing and you should go into it with an understanding of what the distributions are, it's not the end of the world. The difference between the distributions are pretty superficial. They're not that important. Um, the biggest difference between distributions tends to be the package manager of that distribution. Now, not all distributions are going to have different package managers. Some distributions will use the same underlying system as other distributions. A good example of this is the highly popular Ubuntu distribution, which is really just a customized version of Debian. And so they use the same package manager, APT or apt. Um, another common one that people will get recommended when they're new to Linux is Manjaro. But Manjaro uses the Pacman package manager, which is the same package manager, manager that Arch Linux uses. And so these distributions aren't fundamentally different from one another. Most of the time, they're just cosmetic. They have a different customization for their desktop environment. They come with different programs pre-installed. The way I like to think of distributions is more along the lines of just like a grocery bag or a grab bag. It's a couple of maintainers out there who thought to themselves, you know what Linux needs is this program, this program, this program, and this desktop environment all thrown into the same bag. That's a distribution. Um, which brings us, I suppose, to the last thing I want to talk about, which is a desktop environment. And so a desktop environment is what attracts the eye initially to a certain distribution, right? It's the unique look of a distribution, ignoring kind of the foundational similarities between the distributions. So one distribution might have very vibrant colors or really striking icons. One might be oriented like Windows. One might be oriented like Mac OS. Um, and to a new user, those feel like very earth shattering differences, those different desktop paradigms or those different desktop aesthetics. But again, behind the scenes are similar functionalities across those uh, distributions. So as far as desktop environments can, are concerned, there's two really, really big desktop environments that are kind of dominating the Linux space currently. And one that, you know, is in a distant third from my perspective. What I would argue is probably the most popular or the most common desktop environment is the GNOME desktop environment or GNOME, depending on who you're talking to and how sophisticated they want to sound. Um, and the second one, which is probably a very close second, if not pushing for the lead right now, is the KDE Plasma desktop environment. Now, the third one is XFCE, which is, it feels older to me. It feels like a desktop environment from a previous generation, uh, but it is very extensible, very customizable, uh, feature rich. It has everything a modern desktop environment needs or everything a, a modern user would want from their desktop environment, but it just starting to show its age a little bit. It feels a little bit dated um, and it, to its benefit, it doesn't require as much processing power or memory as uh, GNOME or KDE Plasma. So take that for what it's worth. Um, when choosing your desktop environment or when choosing your distribution based on those desktop environments, there are going to be some differences between the three of them. The biggest difference really is going to be, be between GNOME and KDE Plasma. There's some drama going on right now with the GNOME developers. GNOME is taking a very isolated and I would say top-down approach to developing their desktop environment. They have a very specific vision that they're trying to execute. They're taking some steps towards maybe systematizing or unifying their design language. 
and making it more difficult for third-party developers or the community developers to create their own themes or unique look and feel on the GNOME desktop environment in favor of having a more unified system that can be applied across multiple different systems and they'll all operate you know, relatively similar. You'll have a similar experience no matter what version of GNOME, you're, you're not version, uh, no matter what device you're using GNOME on, no matter what packages you're using um, within your system. KDE is taking more of an opposite approach. KDE is highly customizable, almost to a fault. It can be very overwhelming for new users to uh, make the transition to KDE just because of how deep and uh, extensible that system is. So take that also with a grain of salt. This is why on YouTube, KDE customization videos are, are so popular because uh, number one, the system allows you to do it, but number two, there's just so much depth to the customization that it can be overwhelming without a guide. Uh, and then XFCE is somewhere, in my opinion, between the two of them. It has a lot of depth and customization, not to the same depth that KDE offers, um, but it also strove, strived, I don't know if it's continuing to do so, um, for a unified look and feel to the desktop environment that feels like XFCE when you're using it. Um, I want to save at this point, I want to save the conversation for what distributions to choose as you're initially setting up Linux for another video. But just to recap on this one before I call it, is understanding what a kernel is, right? The middleman talking to your hardware and translating that information into processes. What a distribution is, is kind of a collection or a grab bag of um, programs, packages, uh, customized aesthetics, that sort of thing. A package manager, which is the program that will package and install programs onto your computer and desktop environments, which is the graphical front end that you see as the end user. And all four of those things are important in understanding, um, or important to understand when we initially pick our first uh, Linux distribution, which we'll do in the next video. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one.